Well, hey guys, welcome to the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast where we share biblical truth for any girl in any season. I'm your host, Kaylee Olson. I'm here with my co-host for today, Megan Ryan. Hey, happy hey, to Megan. be here. I know. And our teacher for the day, yeah. Wendy Blight. Hello. Welcome, Wendy. Oh, I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for inviting me. And welcome to all of our YouTube friends watching too. Yes. Um, if you're just joining us, we are at the end of a four-part series mm -hmm. that we've done on prayer. And so if you have missed the last couple of episodes, we just want to fill you in real quick. Mm -hmm. I recommend you pause and go back to listen to them. Right. But in episode one, we had a great conversation just about some of the ways that we maybe misunderstand what prayer mm -hmm. is, how we might overcomplicate it when maybe it's just not that complicated. Mm -hmm. um, in the second episode, we talked about what it means to ask and who God is. Who is it that we're asking for yeah. things in prayer? And then in our last episode, we talked about what do we do with the disappointment and grief that comes when our prayers don't get answered yeah. um, and how do we wade through that? And so it's been a really great series, um, but we're excited for today's episode too. Yeah. For sure. So, Wendy, not only are you our biblical content specialist mm -hmm. here at Proverbs, who, I mean, I don't know about you, Megan, but I go to Wendy on the reg <laughs> no. with questions. Yes. Literally. Or just prayer. Like, <laughs> I know. if I need prayer, yes. who is the first person I'm going to text and ask for <laughs> I know. prayer? And Wendy. we've had her on the podcast a lot of times before to talk about prayer, but today— we're here because you know we know you're the author of several books, and one of the books that you've written recently is called Rest for Your Soul, mm -hmm. and it covers your anxiety or covers your journey through anxiety and how you quite literally found true mm -hmm. rest for your soul through practices like prayer, solitude, and silence mm -hmm. that combat your anxiety. And so we thought it would be a great way to kind of round out this series. Mm -hmm. And so I can't wait to hear what you have to share with us today. Mm, thank you. I'm excited. Are you ready? Yes. yes. All right. I'm, so I'm going to pray. Okay. You know me. The prayer has to great. pray. Yes. <laughs> Father, um, all I've been doing is thinking about who would be listening to this um, on the other side one day. And so I've just asked for this to just be your divine appointment, my friend, that you would know God sees you. He knows what you're walking through. He hears you. He sees your tears. And he brought you here so that the three of us could just be um, his word opened up to you, manna to feed your soul and know that everything will be okay. So please be with us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I thought I'd begin today sharing how be still time and then what I'm going to talk about along with that with prayer really went from something I read the words in the Bible and in books um, and then they became like the lifeline that I feel like saved my life. And um, we're going to process what be still time is and then we're going to marry it with prayer. So we're going to walk through some steps together. But I can say we know from having done the podcast through the years, we know that anxiety and feeling overwhelmed is prevalent among women today, right? I'm sure you've been talking about that. And so I thought I would open by sharing my story just so you can know mm -hmm. sort of where I'm coming from and how the be still time or what I came to call sacred pauses combined with prayer, became medicine, really, for my soul during that time and just pulled me out of what I, I like to call paralyzing anxiety that hijacked my life because yeah. I, I just felt like I went from one space to the next, and I don't even know how I got there in the middle. Mm -hmm. But during that time, these words, this was my prayer every day, Lord, please settle my unsettled soul because I, mm -hmm. I could never feel normal. I lived every day with this unceasing um unsettledness. And I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to talk about it because you know what? I just thought it would go away, right? Yeah. That's kind of what you feel like. If you can ignore mm -hmm. something, it'll eventually go away. But they eventually landed me in a place that was really terrifying for me because I just started to not leave my house. Wow. And um, I, I, I wouldn't go to any events. And whether it was a party or a shower or a wedding or my family going out to dinner, I, I didn't want to leave to go to a restaurant or anywhere. Oh. Grocery stores made me feel like the walls were closing in on me. Mm -hmm. So I just stayed home and I couldn't sleep. And every little task that was asked of me or I even had to think of doing overwhelmed me. And then physically, I had all these chronic pains in my body everywhere. So then my obsessive thinking was, uh-oh, I have this, I have that, what's wrong with me? And all of it led to just hopelessness and helplessness. And I never gave my body time to rest or recalibrate or refocus because I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so before we begin, I want to begin with some be still time with us, if that's okay with y'all. Yes, y that's great. So what I'm going to do is first 
say to our friend, when was the last time you were still? And I'm going to look at both of you too. When was the last time you were still? And when I say that, no outside noise, no chaos around you, no to-do list, just going round and round in your head of everything you have to do. And I'm probably going to guess, and you've got a child, yeah. you know, a young child. so Who is not still. Yeah, never <laughs> still. So my guess is, though, it's been a while. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to do it because this is how important it is to me that we just take time to do this. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask whoever's listening to um, close your eyes if you're able, but if not, you can still do it. We're I'm going to do if you're it. Driving. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Sorry. Okay. But if you, I'm going to ask you to take three deep breaths first, and I'm going to ask you to count to four in and seven out with each breath. And when you do it, I want you to think of breathing in the Holy Spirit and breathing out whatever's worrying you. And then I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to be read three verses from a passage one, two, three, and then I'm going to give you a pause in between. So are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Take your breath. Start now. Be still, my daughter. Be still and know, my daughter. Be still and know that I am God. Okay, when I immersed myself in these words, they were like power-packed words when I really started to immerse myself in them. Mm -hmm. And I learned the incredible significance that God places on being still because we see it throughout Scripture. And that's just taking time every day. In the beginning, if you're in this place, every day to take these pauses. And so where's the best place to go when we're we're trying to understand what a word means in scripture, right? Go directly to scripture. So we're going to go to Psalm 46. And y'all know when we teach from a passage, we give context. Mm-hmm. So I want to give a little context to it, which means we're going to look at who wrote it real quickly, why they wrote it and who they were writing to and what was going on. So scholars believe Psalm 46 was written by priests that were called the sons of Korah, Mm -hmm. serving during David's time, King David's time. And what was going on around them was war. The unbelieving nations were at war with the Israelites. So I'm going to read portions of it right now. You can close your eyes. You can just listen. But I want you to listen for the be still word when you hear it, but also words that speak to your heart where you are right now. Mm -hmm. God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So when I read that at that time in my life, I was drawn to the be still words. And that word in Hebrew is rapha, R-A-P-H-A-H. And here's what it means. Relax, sink, withdraw, release. Relax, sink, withdraw, release. So I don't know about you, but that sounds real good. Yes. (laughs) And then I want to say that's not my personality, is not to be still, to be quiet and do those things. (laughs) So then we notice the next word, it says to be still and know. So um, that word is yada, Y-A-D-A. Well, that word means cease striving, surrender, um, and acknowledge. So it doesn't mean gather information here. Do you see what I'm saying? It's different. Mm -hmm. It's cease striving. It's surrender. Mm -hmm. So that like makes me go, okay, God, I like these words. Release, withdraw, surrender, Mm -hmm. and cease striving. But there's a little bit more because it's be still and know what? That I am God. That I am God. So there is some knowledge in knowing it. It's it's called active stillness, right? Not passive stillness. So you're you're releasing and stuff, but you're learning. And what you're learning is a deeper understanding of who God is. That's the purpose of this be still time these priests are talking about. And so um, when we 
when we remind ourselves of this, we can think back to the priests of Kor and what they were saying and why they were saying it. They were mm-hmm. saying it to the people at the time that were in the middle of this war and it was terrifying and their wives were losing husbands and children were losing fathers. And it's because they needed to be reminded of those words that God is their refuge, their strength, their ever present help, their most high God. And so what it said to me is that in the stillness, that's where we step into God's nearness. That's the purpose. In the stillness, step into God's nearness. And this is where prayer comes in, our conversation. So if we think of prayer, is Philippians 4, 6, and 7 like a verse everyone Mm -hmm. thinks of, right? And that verse says, do not be anxious about anything. Pray about everything with thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God. The peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Mm -hmm. Lots of people know that. It sounds like such a happy, like, oh, it's so simple. Yeah. It's not. Oh, it does. It's like, oh, here's a formula. Pray it. And it's not. But what we miss is, go to verse five, Mm. the last four words right before God says to pray about everything. It says, the Lord is near. Mm. And I find that incredibly powerful because he's saying, before I'm asking you to go do what sounds impossible, remember, I'm here, Mm. I'm near, and I'm with you. So that when we are entering into, I was in overwhelming anxiety, a friend of mine had lost a baby. All these things, if we receive a diagnosis we don't understand, if someone's walked out on us or betrayed us, we've lost a dream, whatever it is, we can know that when we go to God with that formulaic Philippians 6 and 4, 6 and 7, in 5, he's reminding us he's near. Mm-hmm. And so um, it that gave me such peace that for some reason those words gave me such peace. But what happens when we do that? We realize he's near, but our prayer isn't answered, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I was in that anxiety and I did all these things. So what happens? And that's where I found myself. Prayer is hard. And so what I want to show you is tell you a story that happened decades ago to show another time when I was in unanswered prayer, but it was about fear and how God showed me that he was there. Mm -hmm. So I, um, four decades ago, not four, maybe, I don't know. No, not that long ago, but Many 28 years ago, how's that? Sounds I great. walked into my apartment to um, find an armed masked man. And the events of that day literally brought me to a crisis of faith. Mm-hmm. Um, and all I wanted was a sign from God, anything that he was there, because I couldn't understand how he could sit on his throne and watch what happened to someone who called himself God's child, mm-hmm. right? I wanted to see him. I wanted to know, Wendy, I hear you. I haven't forgotten you. Just take these steps, say these verses, yeah. and I will make everything be better. But I didn't hear anything. And I have to say, after a while, that day caused me to doubt, mm-hmm. like God and his love and who he was because I heard nothing all the time. And I felt like, why won't you intervene? And why did you, why did you watch that happen to me? And I just felt like I heard nothing. And, and the hours turned into days and the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months and the months turned into years. Mm -hmm. And you know what, through those years, I did have some good days, you know, when I was around people who built me up and, and all of that. But overall for 12 years, I was angry with God and I doubted him and I really felt like he wasn't the God that I heard all about at Baylor University. You know, that's where I went to school. And but 28 years later, I was speaking at a women's event in Houston, Texas, and God showed me in a way that I could never have imagined that he had been there during that time. And it was through this sweet woman named Elaine who she just came up for prayer after I gave my testimony. And um, she came up and told me that she was in a small group in a church and their pastor had told them that a young woman had been attacked at Baylor and that he wanted their group, he assigned their group to pray Mm -hmm. for this woman. And so they began to pray a scripture that I'm going to read you portions of. Isaiah 62, one through four is the scripture. It says this, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet until her righteousness goes forth like brightness and her salvation like a torch that is burning. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will designate. You will be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal headband in the hand of your God. It will no longer be said of you forsaken, nor 
to your land will it any longer be said desolate, but you will be called my delight is in her for the Lord delights in you. Now I'm going to be honest. If someone had told me that they were praying that verse for me all those years ago, Mm -hmm. I would have gone, I don't even understand what that verse is about. It's Mm -hmm. from the Old Testament. It's about Jerusalem. And why would that be prayed for Mm -hmm. me? And then she texted her husband to send a screenshot of her Bible open to that passage. And written on that yellow page next to that passage was my name in the year 1986. And y'all, when she came to the conference, she didn't know who I was because my last name was different. I was traveling with Lisa Allen. We were coming from Charlotte, North Carolina. She didn't know until she heard my testimony. And then when she heard that word forsaken Mm -hmm. and um, she texted her husband again and she said, go find my journal from 1986 because she's like this prayer warrior. So she has Mm -hmm. journals upon journals and they're all dated. So within about two hours... (laughs) She brought that screenshot to me, y'all. And this was her personal prayer that she prayed for me. Every week, once a week. God, for Wendy's sake, I will not keep silent. And for her soul, I will not keep quiet until Wendy's righteousness goes forth like brightness and her salvation is like a torch that is burning. The nations will see Wendy's righteousness and everyone will see her glory. And Wendy will be called by a new name. The mouth of the Lord will designate. She will be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of God. You will, God will, it will no longer be said of, about, or by her that she is forsaken, nor will her soul or her spirit be called desolate, but she will be called, my delight is in her, and God will rejoice over Wendy and she will be glad. Mm-hmm. So she took that Old Testament verse mm-hmm. and just prayed and put my name in it. And I realized not only had God not forgotten me, but he had appointed this group of people to pray for me when I was doubting him. And honestly, times where I shook my fist and said, I hate you and I don't believe in you anymore. And that's the truth. That's how I felt about God. And so I stood amazed then. And I stand amazed now that God would like pull back these, the veil between me and heaven and show me what was going on and um, that he cared enough, that he just cared enough because he didn't have to show me that. And so I just want our friends to know that um, God is faithful to his word, even Mm -hmm. when we, we can't see it or feel it. And so maybe like you're wondering if God hears your prayers and you want to change things Mm -hmm. and want everything to be over, but you can't and it isn't. So if you're there, which I know you are because, friend, it's a divine appointment while you're here. Mm-hmm. Hear these words and let them sink in. Jesus is near, and he's as near as your next breath. And you need only be still and call on his name, Jesus. And he invites you, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And that's what we're talking about today. And he may not fix everything at the moment and he probably won't. He doesn't usually, but it's an invitation to come and be still with the only one who can do it in the middle of our mess, in the middle of our pain and our doubt, everything He's the only one, but it's all about accepting that invitation to be still y'all. It's all about being with him in prayer. And what does it look like? And that's, we're going to get practical now. Yeah. So um, I'm going to give you some truths. I'm going to give you some promises. and I'm going to give you some reminders to pray. And there's not one correct way to pray here. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this worked for me and I've seen it work for other people. And so praying, I want to remind you of some things. First, remember you're praying to the God who formed you and shaped you, right? Mm -hmm. He is your Abba Father and he calls you by name. He created you in your mother's womb. He knows everything about you. Second, you're praying in the very name of, of God's son who saved and redeemed you. You aren't simply reciting the name Jesus. You're praying in accordance with what that name carries and the power that accompanies that name. And third, you pray in faith. And what does that mean? Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So what is that saying? The verse is clear. The more time you spend In the Bible, that's the word about Christ. The more time you spend in God's word, the more your faith will increase. 
And the more your faith increases, the more faith-filled your prayers will be. It just happens. So we we pray to God in Jesus' name, in faith. Then what do we do? We do what Elaine and her friends did. We pray according to God's word. Mm-hmm. Max Licato says this, one of our Proverbs favorites ever. We've done right. almost all his books. Well, we couldn't do all his, it is so many. But he says this, God invites you. Find a promise that fits your problem. Build your prayer around it. These prayers of faith touch the heart of God and activate the angels of heaven. Miracles are set in motion. Your answer may not come overnight, but it will come and you will overcome. Okay. So now I'm going to read you Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. And I want you to think of a seed as I read this. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish through the seed, right? It yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. And then the the prophet Isaiah compares God's word to that seed. Mm -hmm. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purposes for which I sent it. So praying God's word is what activates the living and active Hebrews 4, 12, living and active word that it is. And it does it in such a way that when we pray it in faith, it will conform our prayers to God's will because where do we find his will? In his word. In his word. So we pray to God in Jesus' name, in faith, according to God's word, and then we're to pray with confidence, right? We're children of God. Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing the message. What is hearing the message? It's abiding. It's spending time. It's be still time with God in his word, and that will increase your faith. So I want to stop for a moment and answer this question you may be asking. When I wrote the book, someone, I hadn't included this, and someone said to me, what about this? So I want to honor what she said because she was in a really hard place. And if you don't get the answer you've prayed for, does that make God less trustworthy or his God less true? And that's what I was thinking back then when I was so fearful. And the answer requires a deeper understanding of what is unanswered prayer, right? So God commands us to pray, not to grant our wishes or give us what we want. We say this all the time at Proverbs. It's to build a relationship with him, right? That's Mm -hmm. what it's for and to deepen our faith. And for me, when she asked me that question, you know where I went to immediately to put in the book? I went to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane Mm because it's the only time I could think of that really meant a lot to me that he prayed, Father, if you're willing to take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And way more of a burden way more of anything than we'd ever carry, right? Mm -hmm. Me carried our sin on him. So taking myself to that place when I struggle with unanswered prayer, it reminds me, just look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. If he needed that, be still time. He went alone to be in the garden. If he needed that, how much more do I need? And who met him there? The angels met him there. The Holy Spirit met him there. That's where we find him in that be still time. And then we can pray. So when you don't see God answering your prayers, the answer is draw nearer. Don't run away, which is what you want to do, right? You want to run away. Draw near because he's gone before you. He's walking. He, he gone, he's gone before you. He's walking with you now, and he's going to meet you wherever he's taking you. So we, we um, pray to God in Jesus' name, in faith, according to his word, with confidence. And then we pray specifically. And that's just what I talked about with Elaine and her friends. Mm -hmm. And so all this means, y'all, is you go to the scriptures, um, open your Bible, do a Google, find the word you're struggling with. For me, it was anxiety, could be fear, doubt, whatever. Do a Google search, Bible verses on whatever. Find them, pray over them, read them, maybe find five or six. What speaks to your heart? Mm -hmm. The next thing you do, you just weave that verse into a prayer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you an example I already read you Philippians. You know what Philippians 5 through 7 mm-hmm. says. So the other verse was Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose mind are steadfast because they trust in you. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to show you how I personalized and prayed, prayed that prayer. So we're almost done. Do we have time for this and a little close? Yep. Okay. So here's the prayer I wrote. Father, I have so much on my mind right now. I can't sleep. I feel anxious. Your word tells me to fix my mind on you not my circumstances and my worries. So your word tells me you are near and to pray about everything. So right now I'm coming to you with my worries, especially the fact that I can't rest or relax. It feels like a motor is constantly running in my body. My mind never stops. I desperately want to walk in the fullness of your peace. So Father, 
I thank you that I can stop trying to control everything because you are in control of all things. I'm choosing to fix my mind on you and your promises. I'm doing this so you will make my heart steadfast. And I'm giving all my worries to you, claiming your promise that in doing this, your peace that passes all understanding will guard my heart and mind. And I trust you for this peace because you're a promise keeping God. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. So I began this today talking about, Lord, please settle my unsettled soul. And I think we've discovered together the answer is to be still Mm -hmm. and then set apart times of prayer. Mm -hmm. But it's a choice, right? It's something we have to choose. And so I just want to encourage who's listening that if you find yourself in that place, um, whether God stills the storm or carries you through to the other side, he's going to be with you. Mm -hmm. Elroy, that's his name, right? The God who sees, absolutely sees your tears, hears your cries. Mm -hmm. So I want to invite you to be still and I want you to hear these words. And I wrote these and I'm just going to read them and then I'll be done. So my friend, I know this is hard. What you feel is real. And though God feels far, he is near right there with you. He's working things out for your good. And when your prayers aren't answered in your time or in your way, it's my deepest prayer that God has shown you that he hears you, his presence is with you, his spirit is in you, his power is available to you. God is good, his love secure, and his hope sure. And that, my friend, is truth your soul may rest in. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Megan, I don't know about you, but... um we at the beginning kind of talked about how we always looked up to Wendy because she's like this prayer expert and she's always who we invite on to talk about prayer. But um, the way you described your journey with anxiety at the beginning, I know that was a really hard thing Mm -hmm. for you to go through. But I think for me, it almost made me feel like, okay, I'm not the only one who sometimes has dips in Mm -hmm. my prayer life. It's Mm -hmm. not always this linear journey that even somebody like you, who I look up to so much Mm -hmm. can go through seasons of struggling. makes me feel like, okay, I'm not crazy (laughs) or that it's okay to struggle. And it's always an invitation to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you for being so vulnerable and and sharing that. I was here. I was working here. I was teaching. I was writing. I had published three books. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's not weakness. It's, it's just how we are as humans. Yeah. But I, but I actually want to ask you a question about that. So you, you talked about the two things we need to do were be still and pray Mm -hmm. God's word. But I know for me, whenever I'm in the middle of like really anxious and unsettled Mm -hmm. um, seasons, I really tend to isolate. And Mm -hmm. so I think there's definitely for sure power in like being still and then praying God's word. But what what about reaching out to people? Because, I mean, you and I were just talking about this yesterday yeah. and kind of, you know, like the the feelings that we're having right now and what we need prayer for. But it took a lot for both of us to kind of just be like, I need prayer for this. Like, and I this okay? is going on. Are you okay? Yeah, because I think whenever we're anxious, mm-hmm. we can get in our head. Yes. And being isolated and being still is a good thing, but sometimes it's not mm-hmm. always a great thing. So in your experience with that that season that you were in, where you were scared to leave your house and you were mm-hmm. afraid at all times, mm-hmm. and it had really just caused you to be super unsettled, when did you finally reach out or did you finally reach out to mm-hmm. somebody? I did. So um, first of all, I have my husband who was wonderful mm-hmm. and walked me through. Then my internist, when I went to her, told me to see a counselor. So my church has counseling. So I started to go to a counselor. And then I had a friend, Leah DePascal. I know she won't Mm -hmm. mind. Um, I talked to her. So I had three people in my life that I was talking to. But the be still time was um, something that... It is hard, Mm -hmm. and I wish we had more time to talk because that's when your voice speaks to you the most. And so in the book, there are ways that really help you train your mind Mm -hmm. in those be still times to not wander back to where you're used to going because that's such a good point. But having people in your life that love you, whether it's Mm -hmm. family, siblings, boyfriend, husband, counselor, friends, whatever, it's really important to have, even if it's just one or two, because if you totally isolate yourself with no help from anyone, yes, God is 
God can do anything, but we also know he gave us community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In those be still times, I mean, maybe this is just because I like, I like yeah. a formula, but mm-hmm. there's not always a formula. Like, is there a difference between be still time and like the time I spend reading my Bible? In yes. The That's a great question. Absolutely. So there's this difference in the book I talk about between solitude and silence. Okay. Okay. Solitude is being still but you can be out riding your bike. You're still not with people. You might be around people. And those are things like, you know, um, I think more of Bible study. So Bible study, um, riding your bike, just taking a walk in the park, all those things that will calm your soul, that's solitude. And they're so helpful. And I give you lots of ideas and ways to do that. Um, Memorizing scripture can be something that you do in solitude, Mm -hmm. right? That's hiding that word. But, but, But silence... You, there should be no people around you. You need to be all by yourself in your room so you can literally, like, that's when God speaks. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had time to just tell you examples of in that stillness. You're one of the stories. The, mm-hmm. that, that, that call I made to you from my car at the grocery store, mm-hmm. that call was out of it be still. Was that when I had just found out that I was pregnant? Okay. Well, I have to share the story. Okay. So I had a miscarriage in 2020. And that was a really hard season. I knew you were praying for me, but um, I had gotten pregnant again almost like a year to the day later. And I was terrified because when you find out you're pregnant for the first time, you're really happy. Mm -hmm. When you lose a baby and you find out again, I remember looking at the test and just going, here we go. Like, and just being on pins and needles, Mm -hmm. but being so early that I didn't want to tell anybody. And I had told my husband and that was pretty much it. And out of the blue... I get a call from Wendy Blight who just said, I feel like I need to call you and talk to you. So I'm thankful that I didn't have to wait as long as you did to have somebody come up to me and tell me that they've been praying for me. But yeah, there's, Mm -hmm. there's true evidence that God works through those moments. Well, here's the thing, the first time, the very first time Mm -hmm. that he put you on my heart was when I called you, Uh, I either called or texted you a prayer. And mm-hmm. it was the anniversary of your miscarriage. And I didn't know that. Do you remember that? That's in the book. Oh. Yeah, it's in the book. So from that moment, the Lord just knit my heart yeah. with yours. So that's yeah. why that day in the parking lot at Harris Teeter. Mm-hmm. And and I, that my conversation was telling you, you are that baby's going to be born. And that was a boldness wow. that would have never come but mm-hmm. for that first time. And that's when you said, I haven't told anybody, but I am. But do you know what it's like to tell a person who had a miscarriage, you're going to have a baby? I was shaking when I told you that. So, I mean, yeah. that's that's what he can do. So it isn't always mm-hmm. like it. it's just he just making yourself available is for other people, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think just recognizing like it is a fight. For that still time, it's not mm-hmm. gonna come no, easy. So mm-hmm. hard. Um, it's kind of like a muscle you have to train. Yeah. Of like, I yeah. have to. I mean, like for me, it's like phones got to go in the other room. Yeah. Yep. Like nothing's got to be around, and like some days I don't want to sit in it because like the mm-hmm. voices in my head are yeah. loudest the first. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think I'm encouraged and challenged today that like I need to go make some bees still time. <laughs> I know. Um, even though it feels like I'm in a season of life where there's a lot going on, and it doesn't seem like I can press mm-hmm. pause on any of those things. Yeah if it's like in God's word and it's a command, it is something yeah. that we need to make time to do. Yeah. But Megan, I think that there's something we shouldn't miss from what Wendy said. She was in the Harris Cedar parking lot <laughs> when she was being still and, and experiencing solitude. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I don't have to go home every single time mm-hmm. to be right. still. Like if I can find 10 minutes in my car mm-hmm. and he can do what he did yeah. in the Harris Cedar parking mm-hmm. lot, like, who am I to think that he can't do that in the parking lot here or mm-hmm. whenever I get a moment yeah. to myself, even if I stay in the bathroom for a little longer yeah. than I yeah. should. So it's, but it's it, great. But it is important that when you're in the depths of it, mm-hmm. when you're in the depths of the anxiety or the fear, it is important to make it daily every day by yourself somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then when you develop that, then you can mm-hmm. go have it anywhere like you're talking about because yeah. you love it. You long for it. Yeah. Mm. I long for it now, you know, mm. um, my, pastor in college said discipline leads to desire and I take that into that's every area really good. of life <laughs> that's of, really good the more I discipline myself to spend time in God's word the more I want it the more I discipline myself to be still the more I want it the more I discipline myself to go to the gym the more I want to go so I think that's just something I am reminded of yeah for sure well um 
Megan, I love this series so yeah, much. It, it this was, was fun. I feel like uh, we talked about it at the beginning. What a great way to wrap up this series mm-hmm. with one of our favorite people who we go to for prayer and to learn Thank from you. about prayer. Um, so if you are just tuning in on YouTube or the podcast, please go back and watch or listen to all of the episodes that we have lined up for you. But Megan, you're going to share about some resources. Yeah. Well, first, I don't want y'all to miss Wendy has a brand new book out called Rest for Your Soul. Yes. A Bible study on silence, solitude, and prayer. And we cannot recommend it Mm -hmm. enough. Um, It is practical. It has so much goodness in it. It's going to be one of those books that you want to just carry from season to season and use as a resource. And so, Wendy, I want to thank you for, I know that that costs you a lot to put time into that. And so thank you for doing that for us. Um, and we've mentioned it on the other episodes, but I want to mention it one more time. We do have a brand new study guide with first five called praying through the Psalms 30 pretty. days I know, to uncomplicate so <laughs> how you talk about. I said that on the other episodes too. It's just very pretty. Um, I, yeah, this one is just really good because like Wendy said, talked about, like, how do we take God's word and apply it to our prayer lives? Um, and that is something that this book will do. It'll walk you how the different kinds of prayer, you know, how to praise God, how to confess, mm-hmm. how to intercede and mm-hmm. ask and all the things that we've talked about. Those are two resources we do not want you to miss. Mm-hmm. So we will link them in the show notes for you. Two resources, one written by Wendy, other one, Megan, written by you, yes, written by Shay Hill, who we've heard from yes. and a couple of other Proverbs people. And I mean, I just am so proud of the content that's coming out of this house. It's really exciting. But guys, we got to wrap this up. Yep. This is a great series. Thank you so much for joining us at Proverbs 31 Ministries. We believe when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Everything. See ya. (laughs)